Welcome every uh, welcome everyone to this session. So uh, the goal of this session is show you how do you build uh, uh, anything you want with AI. So so this goal of this session. So we will show you uh, what do you do if you want to build the application with uh, with AI. If you want to use AI in your job to plan your activity. If you want to use AI to build the application. So the goal of this session is just show you the thing you can do with AI. And uh, so the first speaker for this session is Brian. So Brian will present. So how do you build? Uh, uh, so the theme of the session of Brian is building AI can be for everyone. So uh, Brian, you, you can start your session. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you everyone for making time to join in the session and to listen to the to the talks today. I hope this will like encourage you to also build with the eye because it's not something hectic. It's something that we can all do. So a quick introduction of who I am. I am a GitHub Campus expert, which is a program that helps students build technical communities in the universities. It empowers them with resources and everything. And I'm also a Google Developer Students Club lead at Kabarak University. I help lead the club and organize sessions and events. Uh, I'm a lover of hackathons. Of course, I love building with AI and different tools. So I co-organize a hackathon called Luna Hacks, which is like a one 24 hour hackathon that happens once every year. It's going to happen again this year. So we are inviting you to come. I also volunteer with Open Source Community Africa Nairobi, and I do write technical articles for Shikod Africa Nairobi and Pi Ladies Ghana. So when I'm not giving talks like this, or I'm not coding on my laptop, you will find me swimming, skating, and of course cooking. I've not added it here, but I'm really a good cook. And I also want to try drumming. So yeah, I hope you enjoy the session today. So we'll go right into the tea of the session. So when most of us hear about generative AI, you know, maybe you're not in the field of, you're not a machine learning engineer, you're not, a, you're not like a data scientist, you're not a data analyst, you don't really understand what all of this entails. And you're just hearing people throwing the word generative AI, you know, soon rapid chai when they, they're giving their keynotes at Google I.O., they'll be like generative AI, generative AI, like what does this really mean? So today we'll understand what generative AI are. So generative AI are typically large, it's, it's powered by what we call large language models. And large language models are just uh, a neural network that is trained on huge, huge and tons and tons of data. So we've had large language models with us for the longest time. Like for example, when you are sending emails, uh, when you're typing something, you usually have something that auto-completes for you. So for example, when you write roses are red, it will automatically complete violets are blue and sugar is sweet. And we've been seeing these in our emails and maybe when you are typing in chat or in WhatsApp, when you are texting something and it gives you an auto-suggestion. And we've also seen it with code, like it has been working for different folks, like when you want to generate code with generative AI. So once you like write, you, you write, you're writing like a for loop and you are, this is like an example of a for loop, it will automatically autocomplete this part. And what makes it different is that modern LLMs are large, like they are built at scale. We have tons and tons of data that have come into it to make what we now call modern LLMs. So they are pretty much large. So assume this like something like a, a cruise ship, so we were dealing with with yaches and boats, but now we have cruise ships, like ultra modern cruise ships. So when when you are dealing with these normal boats, we have we have like a let me give, I'm using an analogy of fishing because I come from the coastal region of Kenya, so I can typically relate that with what I want to share today. So let's say someone wants to go fishing, they would use a fishing boat. So that boat that boat helps them to fish. 
if someone wants to go on like just having fun they will just take like a, a a tourist ship for example if you visit zanzibar you'll just take maybe a tourist maybe tour around the islands and all that so you are using one thing you're using different things to solve different problems but now imagine you can use one thing to solve all the problems like you can have sentiment analysis translation summarization classification identity extraction all in one place and that is what we are doing with generative ai and with this now it can help us prototype fast i feel like i'm rushing so let me pause and repeat what i just shared so uh before then before we had generative ai we used to use one 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 model for one thing like i just build a model for sentiment analysis i just build another model for translation i build another model to help me summarize a specific text and i build another model to help me classify let's say for example i want to classify if this is a cat or this is a dog that's what i do but now when llm comes uh, when llms come in now we we have what we call like those large language models that can help us do all this at once you don't have to do it with different models but you have one big model that has been trained on vast data that can help you do all that i ha i hope i broke it down to a level that we all understood that concept so now with that concept llms let us prototype very fast like we can write a poem we can write code we can do everything very very fast without doing anything for example uh, i want to explain this joke i used to be addicted to soap but i'm clean now so the model can quickly explain this joke to me uh, this is just one example another example is i want maybe to build to have five ideas for my science fair project let's say i am i am part of a oh let's say not even science fair project let's say deep learning in daba is coming in africa and i think their call for papers should be closing anytime soon or should have closed this week i'm not sure and you want to like you want to challenge yourself to work on something uh, mind blowing during the conference or present a paper or something and you're looking for motivation just come here and say oh could you give me five neat ideas for a project or an nlp project a computer vision project that i can present during the during the deep learning in daba conference happening soon so that is you can also do that and what makes large language models different is that they are characterized by emergent abilities or the ability to perform tasks that were not present in smaller models like you can uh, you can it's fine tuned that you can you can bring in audio text and video to get an output compared to back then when you only if it's a, it's a only a computer vision model can take in video and only an nlp model can take in text then LLM's contextual understanding of human language changes how we interact with data and intelligent system. So it understands your language with the context you share with it. For example, if I say in the context of someone who comes from uh, the coastal region of Kenya, it will be different compared to the context of someone who is not coming from the coastal region of Kenya. Or let's say, for example, I use Gemini to build this up. And currently in Kenya, we are facing very tragic floods that are ravaging the country in different parts. So let's say uh, I build an app uh, for someone who is in the, in the, in, is, is affected by floods, maybe to guide them and to provide support to them. So if someone who's not faced with floods goes and types in something, it will understand that this context is different and it will try to explain to them that I can only help you in this specific context and not this specific context. But of course that depends on you as the developer who is developing that model. And then LLM can find patterns and connections in massive dis dis disparate data copra. So when you have large data, I don't want to use like huge terms, I want to break down everything. Uh, when you have really, really, really huge data and you're like, okay, so with all this data, I just want to find simple, simple connections with, within itself. So LLMs can do that. LLMs can find very similar patterns in large, large sets of data. And this is what makes LLMs different. So they can help you in search, they can help you in conversation, and they can help you in content generation. So in search, let's say when I want to search for a birthday gift, let's say for your significant other, or let's say you're celebrating a one month anniversary with your significant other, you're like, okay, let me just search for some gift ideas. 
and then for conversation when you want to like have a conversation to gain knowledge on a different area and then content generation when you want to generate content be it text be it video be it uh, pictures and so google has been the industry pioneer for artificial intelligence from google DeepMind producing alphago in 2015 to it inventing a transformer in 2017. And if you've been in the in the in the air industry, you understand what transformers changed in the in the industry for that longest time. And then in 2023 is when we came up with the PAM, PAM2 API, which we've maybe some of us interacted with it or not. And now in 2024, we announced the Google announced the Gemini. Mod, the gamma models which also include that gemini which is le leaning more into like modularity and i will explain what that means uh but while we are doing all this google has been in the forefront to building responsibly like helping build boldly and responsibly we are building test we are building models that are tested for safety we're including privacy in the designs and upholding high scientific standards in the models that they produce and also looking for models that are socially beneficial to most of us. So up to that point, uh, I believe now we understand what generative AI is and what we'll be talking about today. So today we'll be talking about like how to get started with Gemini and most of the sessions lined up today will be focused on the same. I think my session that I think I'm, I'm starting out, my session is more basic, it's more to let you know that this is something that you can do, either you are in the field of artificial intelligence or you're not in the field of artificial intelligence, or let's say just in the field of tech, uh, you do Android, you do web, and you feel like, okay, I'm not an IML person, how can I really get started with it? Then you can get started with it. So when you talk about multimodality, multimodality is when you can input either text, audio, video, or pictures, and the transformer can transform these tokens into anything that can be converted to a front token. That's what we mean by multimodality. So multimodality just helps you take in any input sequence. It can be like, uh, how it can be audio, it can be text data, compared to the traditional ways where you can only build like an MLP model and you can build like a, a, a computer vision model. This now enables you to have different input sequences that can come from like text, audio, and video. And the transformer can then transform those tokens into anything that can be converted to a front token. So that's what we pretty much mean. So if you say that you want uh, an, uh, an image, then we will do, we'll use the image encoder. If you say you want a text, we'll use the text encoder. I hope these terms are not that hectic uh, or that uh, maybe huge for someone who's starting out. Please don't feel like this is too much. It's like really simple if you like just stick to it uh so after that now when i explained multimodality and now we are talking about the gemini era now we are moving into it and when you talk about the gemini era uh, i also want to explain this in simpler terms so when you want to achieve a task you can achieve a task in different ways uh, let me give an example of an excavator uh, a sped and a spoon so when you want to just eat a simple meal in a restaurant, you'll just use a spoon. Uh, when you, you don't need to like use any other big tool. Or when you, but when you want to like combine a mortar, let's say you're building a house and you want to like combine cement and sand and all that to come up with mortar, then you can use a spade to do all that. And when you want to like pick huge, to collect huge moulds of sand, then you would use an excavator. So like that's something huge to help you achieve that troll. And when we talk about Gemini, we have these models come in different sizes. We have the Nano, Gemini Nano, which is used mostly in, in on-device machine learning. And this is where you don't need, you need to, you don't need like, you don't have so much space and you also need it to work on very minimal power like let's say things like wearables let's say a pixel your pixel watch or your um, apple watch or let's say your mobile phone so you use the nano model let's say for example now here use a spoon 
And when you become a determinate pro, this is what is most widely used. And this is what we use as developers. Let's say you want to you want to integrate it in your workflow and do all that. This is what you use. And when you talk about Gemini Ultra, now this is used in enterprises. Like let's say you are a startup, you want to integrate XYZ into it, then now you use Gemini Ultra. I hope I was able to break down the type, different types of models that we have in a very simple way. And we also have like the Gemma open models and these like open source models that are now available for you to utilize as a developer. Uh, if you have a Kaggle account, you can go there and check them out. You can just go to ai.google.dev slash Gemma and look more into it. But you're not going to talk about Gemma today. I think you already had Gemma Day extended and we talked into details about everything Gemma. So today we'll be focusing on Gemini. So now let's look at the Gemini ecosystem. I already explained the models that we have and the sizes that we have. And now we want to understand the ecosystem. What does Gemini provide to you that you can build with AI? So for consumers, like someone who doesn't want to understand the technical bit of it, we have the Gemini app and web. Uh, you can find it in the Google App Store and you also have Gemini in Gmail, Google Docs. If you want to create anything in spreadsheets, Google Spreadsheets, you can use that. So this is the consumer end. So when you want to build your business and you feel like, okay, I need more ideas into this. I need more insight to understand more of how I can uh, improve my budget or how I can work better. Then now you use this into this interface that is like the gemini app and the gemini web website and for developers now let's say people like me or amrel or mohammed or someone else in this call uh, we use now what we call the gemini api we have it in the google a studio and you also have a gemini the gemini api key that you can use to integrate it in the different apps that you're building or applications that you're working on and this talk is about that you're going to be focusing on that today. But if you're a business or enterprise, you're a startup and something, we have Gemini for Google Workspace and Gemini for Google Cloud and Gemini in Vertex AI. So I wish maybe, maybe I, I don't know, maybe we have other talks that we'll talk about, maybe Gemini in Vertex AI or Gemini for Google Workspace, but they will be focusing on the Gemini API specifically in this talk. So up to that point now, we're going to and see how we can get started with the Gemini API. So it's very simple. You don't need to have any knowledge working with APIs. You can test everything on the go. So uh, let me just see. So for the first thing, maybe you can go to the ai.google.com studio. Here, what, when you go to this point in the AI studio, you can generate API keys. As I mentioned, if you want to integrate this in your mobile, in your application, not only mobile, but also maybe a web app, you can also create test and self prompts. Like you just want to see when my users are interacting with this thing, how will it work? How is, how is it going to work with them, you know, and all that. And then you're also, going, you're also able to customize your models in minutes and you're also going to have access to like generate starter code. Let's say you want to generate starter code in Python or something. I'm going to show you all that, so don't worry. You want to generate starter code in Python, you can easily go into it and get that done. So now let's go to the aistudio.google.com. Uh, so I can just open that up and share that tab. Uh -huh. So I can also copy this link into the chat section. Copy and paste it here. Okay. So yeah. I just saw a question in the chat section. I will get back to it in a few. So once you come here, this is what you will see. So this is the Google AI Studio. And here, while well, you see here, you can get your API key. Mm, if you want to get started with building on the API key, but I'm sure you have sessions on that. Uh, so maybe what, what I want us to try out is you can test out prompts, like I said. So let's say, for example, I want to, I want to say, and um, I want to share what what are the favorite what are the uh, 
at the favorite at the favorite meals for Kenyans. So maybe I'm visiting Kenya and I just want to understand what are the favorite meals for Kenyans. So I'll just do that and I'll click enter. And once you do that, you see it will start giving you responses, you know, on the Kenya cuisine and all that. So on the on the right here, you can see what we the part that is labeled model. And in the model part, you are able to select the model that you want to work with. So, like I said, uh, I'm using we are we are going to be using mostly the Gemini 1.5 Pro model, and I'm going to show you how I can also include maybe images in it and and videos. So you can see here, it's it's able to let me know that in Kenya. The most popular meal is ugali, kizeri, and chapati, which like if you come from Kenya, it, it, it doesn't lie. And we also know skumawiki, which is also translated as push the week. So in English, so this is pretty much how you can also test out prompt. So let's see how you can insert an image here. So let's say for example, uh, let's say for example, we're using this. We, we want to see like, we want to get to know what type of flower is this. Let's say I can now say here, what type of flower is this? So I can do that. So I know this is pretty much basic for those who are already doing the technical things, but the session is mostly to show uh, people who are getting started that you can also do this. You know, building for AI is for everyone and is not for folks who maybe have deep knowledge in it. For you to do this, you don't even need to know, maybe you don't even need to like do any course, you just need to follow the simple instructions that you get. Uh, you see here, we have what we call the system instructions. So now let me explain what system instructions mean. So for example, uh, I'm building an app that should focus only on Kenyans. Like I don't want it to go outside Kenya. So I can, insert a system instruction where I say uh, this content, uh, when someone prompts here, the content should only come from Kenya or the content should only be focused on cybersecurity and not any other topic. Let's say if I'm building on the cybersecurity world, I can say that this content should only be focused on cybersecurity and not anything else. So that's an example of a system instruction. And this helps us to, to like tune what we are building to what our users really need. So we can decide to, uh, I don't know if you have, yeah, I think we have sample videos here, but this is pretty much how it works for videos and audio and everything. So I can, I want to show you what we call like safety settings. Uh, during MAD Extended, I did a talk about maybe like building responsibly. So here we also have that in consideration. So you can adjust how you see responses and how like, yeah, the user will be able to see this. So if you don't want to, you want to block uh, any harassment content, you can push this to the end. You like block most of it. But if you can allow this, you see like it, it even gives you like a safety in terms. You agree to, to be applicable to this. And then you say like, okay, keep the filters on. So you have to also work on this. If you don't want head speech, you can tweak around this. If you don't want sexually explicit content or dangerous content, you can tweak this around and see what really works for you and what doesn't work for you. So this is like pretty much what to get started with. So, uh -huh. so let me get back here. So that's the Google AI Studio. And from there on now, oh, I forgot to share something. So still here at the Google AI Studio. So let's say for example, I now want to import this code. Let's say now I, I've, I've worked on this and I feel like, oh, okay, this is something nice. And I would like to maybe have this in my, in my application. I can just come here on the top. I can see on the top right corner, you see something that is called get code. I can just click on get code and you can get this code in Python here. And you're able to like copy this into your, into your, watch the application you're working on and generate an API key here, which you can insert and then proceed with it. So this is very simple. 
very very simple for anyone to come in and test it out you see you, you I, I was not even asked to create an account when i was clicking on this i just clicked and i got uh and i got automatically got access to the google ai studio uh if you have a gmail account then yes you can if you can access gemini then you can access the google ai studio to tweak things around and if you need to if you need to work anything around you have like a very exhaustive documentation that you can you can access anytime to be able to guide you on the stem so let's get back here so we have seen how you can select a model here and we have seen like you can use images on the stem you can get your code uh, if you want to maybe import that code into anything. So once you create an API key from this screenshot, you can see you can get this code in Python, Android, Kotlin, Android, Kotlin, of course, Swift, JavaScript, and you can even open in Colab. So we also have different SDKs that you can use. Uh, so Gemini comes as a REST API, and with the REST API, you know that you can combine it with different client libraries for Python, Node, Java, and Swift to be able to integrate this in your workflow. If you're building with Python, I know Python is like the most famous one. If you're building with Python, if you're building with Node, Swift, or Java, you, are, you should be able to integrate this. Uh, we also have this in different platforms and if you use Google Google Cloud, then we have it in the Vertex AI. So you can use Gemini API and Vertex AI. Even in the in the talk that I shared during the Gamma Day Extended is how you can use like building responsibly with the Vertex AI and Gemini API. So you can use the same platforms to do the same. But in this talk, we don't want to take it that technical. I'm sure you have other speakers and that are going to dive deeper into the same into the same concept. So, but Gemini API gives you access to the Gemini family models and enterprise get support. It ensures that you have, you can have access to full MLOps, example, model evaluation, monitoring and registry. You can also check it out whenever you're ready for production. So you can move something like from prototype to production in matters of like a very short time compared to when you had to like work everything from scratch. So you can get started with all of what I have shared. We have like a cookbook that has all these details. So let me just share this with you in the chat section. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, let me just drop this link in the chat section. This is like a GitHub repo that gives you access to different cookbooks if you want maybe to start out in i'm seeing another question i will just come to that shortly so you can get started uh, with we have like a lot of uh, templates and starter codes that have already been provided for you so it's not any hard it's not like any tricky for you you can just go to google ai studio log in to the google account as i said create an api key and have a quick start guide with python or cola uh, a rest api using cal so uh, i would want to pause there and then uh, uh, look at the questions because i'm sure other speakers will dive deep into other sessions get any questions and probably stop there so looking at the chat section and we have the the first question from pushback uh, that says hope i'm pronouncing your name correctly uh, what's the difference between gemini and gamma so yeah that's a really good question and it can uh it can be really confusing to understand the difference between gemini and gamma so gemini is pretty much what you can interact with as a developer like anyone who knows how to code and doesn't know how to code can interact with gemini so i want to give the simplest explanation so look at Gemini as something that you can interact with it. Either you know how to code or you don't know how to code. Uh, you can easily go to go to Google A Studio and work something around. Or even if you don't understand any machine learning, any machine learning termin uh, terminologies, or you're not a machine learning engineer, you can easily have a deep dive into Gemini through the, the API keys. But when you talk about Gamma, we're talking about the open models that you can now 
pick that model and tweak it. So that can be pretty can be challenging for someone maybe who is not like technically conversant with working with machine learning models compared to Gemini. Uh, so for Gemma, you can go to Kaggle and work around it, make a copy of it. Just like the way you use different models on Kaggle, that's the same way you can use the Gemma open models on Kaggle. So that's like the uh, the basic explanation of Gemini, the difference between Gemini and Gemma. And I hope I was able to explain to you what that means. But if there's anyone else in the call that maybe wants to also explain further, I uh, would be glad to also learn from the same from you. So I hope this answered your question, uh, push back, push, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrongly. So yeah, as push back responds, uh, look at the second question. It says, is it possible to use Gemini, uh, to use Gemini to extract information from a database using natural language? If yes, how do you do it? How to do it? If not, what can be a solution? Okay, uh, you have different parts of the question. So the first thing is, is it possible to use Gemini to extract information from a database using natural language processing? Wow. So uh, I'll explain to you bit by bit so that you understand this concept clearly. So first, uh, Gemini has already been built on a large data set. So it's like it already has access to this large data set that was already built on it and now understands different things thanks to being built on that data set. So first of all, before we have any machine learning model or before we have any groundbreaking model that any company will produce, we usually have data. It's the basis of everything. And the data describes the model. So the model doesn't know anything. It's the data that that describes a quest that that helps that is the data that guides the model so if the model hasn't seen anything to do with kenya then it will not know anything how to do with kenya of how to do with kenya so up to that point i hope i was able to explain to you how gemini was built so gemini was built on a ton of data they worked on it used a lot of parameter fine tuning and all that to come up with the model so Gemini is a model, is a machine learning model. Hope I got you to that point. Now, what you want to do is you want to see if Gemini can, is it possible to use Gemini to extract information from a database? So the first thing is Gemini has already been built on a lot of data, but maybe what your question is, is what Gemini can do is it can help you, uh, it can help you play with data that you have. So let's say, for example, you have a database of data around female genital mutilation and you want to use Gemini now as a developer to be able to build a natural language mod, a natural language app or mod or product that maybe, let's say, female users in the Horn of Africa can be educated more about the same. Then that, yes, you can do. So you can get the API key from Gemini and work on that. So, yes, you can do it with Gemini, but I hope now I took the question and explained it to you from ground to up so that you're able to understand the concept of Gemini. And now instead of like extracting from a database using NLP, you are now able to like work with the data that you have using the API key to build a product or to build something else. Uh -huh. So I hope I answered your question, Etienne, Etienne, Donan. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing your name correctly. I'm so sorry. So I think those were the were the only questions I had. Uh, yeah, yeah. Feel free to ask any question. But I hope I was able to. That's great. That's great. That's great. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, everyone is in the chat. I have a question. I think I think you you your your presentation is uh, done, right? Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Okay. I'm just <laughs> okay. I'll just just for just uh, I want to just so um everyone have a question. Uh, I think um my. Uh, 
Brian, start my presentation too. Uh, yes, you do want to show that if you have some links to show for this tag, I will be happy to know. Um, Brian, again, um, say that uh, yes, but if you have some links to share for this uh, task, I will be um, happy to know. Uh, so if you have uh, additional links, uh, okay, sure. Okay, sure. So what I'm going to do, I'm still here in the call, so I'm going to be dropping some resources in the chat section, like how you can get started with it, either in Python and in a, in specific ways. So yeah, I'm dropping resources in a few in the chat section. Okay, okay. 